Kostov, let's also move on to our uh, 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 question answer session where we'll be having uh, viewers online connected with us and we'll be answering their questions. And uh, while we do that, let us uh, also uh, flash our WhatsApp number and email ID on uh, your screen so that you can note down your uh, note down our number and send across your questions so that uh, if in case you want to get your queries answered live, we can take up your question and get it answered by Kostov right away. Uh, Okay, let's take Najib's query first, uh, Kostub, and uh, uh, he uh, he says that he is an ex NRI and invested in stocks and mutual funds, and uh, he's investing one lakh per month since November 2023, and mostly in small and mid caps. Performance is currently not good and uh, he wants to invest for a long period of time, which is four to five years. He wants to know that can he still be invested, uh, stay invested in small and mid cap categories and uh, uh, good performance in last uh, uh, few years. And he also has five rated funds in his portfolio, although I don't have the details of the mutual funds and also four to five years could be long term for him. But then, you know, um, uh, uh, it's important to have a uh, broader time horizon, especially in these kind of uh, market caps, which are full of volatility and uh, high risk. Anyways, I don't have him on the phone line, a lot of other details that, you know, we might have wanted. Uh, but then uh, how can you go about it since we don't have the details now? What would you recommend? Sure. And uh, you know, thanks, Kavita, for sharing that question. And that's exactly what, you know, I was, I was talking about alluding to earlier that, uh, you know, investors who've come in recent times, uh, I think need to maybe just take a step back and think about really what they want with their portfolio, right? So, and, and for for instance, in this case, I think it's a classic example of uh, Najib, who's who's obviously looked at the most recent returns of small and mid cap funds. He's put in his entire corpus, you know, uh, albeit over the last few months, into small and mid cap strategies. And clearly, uh, we know that you know in the past few months they've they've had a little bit of a struggle. Uh, and and you know uh, that's that's reflecting in his disappointment that you know they've not been doing well, right? And even when we think about his investment time horizon, while he thinks it's it is long term, but honestly, four or five year, years in an equity market is actually uh, you know I would not even call it medium term, but more like short term, right? So I think that's where he needs to post correct, and I think do a very very quick post correction, and and I'm glad he's reached out now. So the first thing you should look to do is. You know, whatever smaller mid cap, because he has this four year, four or five year horizon, he needs to stop investing in smaller mid caps right now. In fact, reallocate back from his existing investments already. I know there'll be some incidents of tax, but it's better than, you know, seeing some losses on a portfolio over uh, a period of, you know, markets are to be volatile. And he needs to, you know, kind of bring it to more sort of large flexi cap allocations. So I would say limit your. Uh, smaller mid cap allocation, not more than 15, 20%, maybe a little bit of risk capital. If you can take it, the remaining, and this is purely an equity exposure I'm talking about. If you have other requirements in terms of uh, liquidity or, or need for that money in between, then you would want to add some fixed income. But purely from an equity allocation perspective, I would say at least 80 to 85% should go into sort of large cap allocation through large cap and flexi cap funds, uh, you know, which are predominantly large cap buyers. I think that's a very important course correction that Najib should do right away. Uh, you know, before, uh, you know, uh, otherwise, you know, it could be too late to kind of correct. All right. So that is uh, Najib's uh, query's answer. But then let's pick up uh, Ruchi's question. Kostov, I think you have the details. Uh, she wants to invest for 10 to 15 years and uh, SIP or uh, mutual funds. And... Uh, uh, she also wants to collect a corpus for uh, uh, a retirement goal. Again, I have a clarity of that. And part of this particular uh, corpus would be also for uh, uh, child marriage. So sure. again, okay. I don't have Ruchi on the phone line with me, so I don't have a lot of details for you. 10 to 15 years look like a good amount of time horizon. But then when you are talking about major goals, okay, because to be talking about your uh, children's marriage, you're talking about your retirement. It's very important for you to analyze the kind of corpus you want to accumulate. Uh, it's interesting that she wants to have equity as an asset class, you know, who can uh, help build this uh, corpus for her. But then again, a, a very uh, common mistake in understanding uh, that SIP is a route through which you can invest in mutual funds. So I think let's start with this very basic confusion right. uh, that usually investors have. Sure, absolutely. I, I think that's again a very important conversation to have. So essentially a mutual fund, I mean, it's an investment product and you can you know have various asset classes uh, you know, within that equity. We've had multi-asset funds, fixed income funds and so on and so forth. 
SIP, like you rightly said, is, is purely a medium or a route where you can do a systematic investing into the mutual fund, right? So essentially what you're doing is that, you know, you set across a certain amount, which every month or every whatever predetermined time frame will get invested into that. The beauty of that is, uh, you know, you avoid the risk of market timing because we're all, uh, you know, susceptible to human behavioral biases and, you know, exactly the conversation we've been having that if markets are, are down, we might say, okay, I don't want to invest. But the whole discipline of investing through SIP is the beauty of, the root of investing in mutual funds, right? So I think, and for most investors, especially salaried investors who don't have all their money available to invest today, uh, you know, that's the best route that a month on month you allocate a part of the salary to SIPs to invest into the various mutual funds that you would your asset allocation would demand, right? So that's that's about how you would go about planning the basic uh, part of investing. Now, since Ruchi has you know, I think a pretty reasonable time horizon of 10, 15 years. And she's clearly thought about that. You know, she wants to plan for retirement, for her uh, children's uh, education uh, or marriage rather. So I think, you know, these are two, what we call non-negotiable goals, right? So when we say non-negotiable, you'll have a certain amount of money in mind that you would want to kind of spend, right? So, uh, and at the same time, even the time horizon is almost non-negotiable, right? I mean, if there's a marriage coming out, maybe one, two years here and there, but you know, you can't extend it by 10 years. Uh, so the why I'm saying that is because when the goals are that crucial and non-negotiable, you have to plan very carefully in terms of the way you take on risk in your portfolio, right? Uh, so since she's got 10, 15 years, we will start with an equity heavy portfolio. We'll probably keep right. maybe five odd percent for emergency requirements. Uh, the remaining should go into equity to start with. Uh, with the majority, right. I would say, right. into large caps and a little bit of mid and small caps. And as we get All closer right. to the date, start reducing the equity exposure, right? So I think sure. that's the broad sure. framework she should follow. Exactly. So far, we can just uh, help her with a very uh, broad suggestion or a strategy, you know, uh, for further detailed analysis. It's good that Ruchi sends us an entire portfolio. But then with that, it's a uh, wrap on the show today, Kostu. Thank you so much for being a part of this uh, uh, show today, Thank helping you. our viewers get through their uh, financial plans. Uh, but then uh, I'm going to leave our viewers with our uh, WhatsApp number and email ID so that you can send across your questions. Anything related to mutual funds that you want to understand or uh, your financial portfolio, send us your questions and we will get them answered live by our experts. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.